Welcome, my name is Thomas. I'm here to talk about in this video and go over the e-file providers process, which is the application that we have to fill out and get fingerprinted in order to e-file tax returns as an independent tax service. Uh, and it's called an electronic file identification number that we must get from the IRS to be able to e-file tax returns as a business. And that's where we are able to make the money from because that number gives us the ability to, profess to purchase professional software and register with a third party bank that's part of the refund program uh, that's essential to us getting money from the clients who look to get their taxes prepared who are not used to paying out of pocket because they get nice ass refunds and they fall into the middle class and low income families and so those particular groups of people generally walk with nice ass refunds they generally go into places that they don't have to pay out of pocket because of that and so you want to be able to position yourself in the marketplace to be able to get uh, clients like this and be able to service them by being able to have your fees taken out through a bank product process. And so this is an example of a person that has a corporation and this is the information they, they submitted uh, right here, the business name, the EIN number, uh, the phone number, the fax number, the address, city, state, zip code, it says, is your mailing address different from your business address? Uh, that's going to vary based on you. You might have a separate address you want information you go to, or it might be the same. You get to choose how that works. And so for, for, the, for this illustration, is no. And then the address here, it says, is your firm or organization open 12 months of the year? It should have, it should, it should be yes versus no, because we want to be, we want to be year round. So we year round tax services. And so if we're going to be year round, we, we, I just want to know that. So we put yes. Uh, it says additional information. Do you want your firm contact posted on the IRS.gov website? That's yes. We want to be found. We in business to do business. We in business to be found by people that are searching. So yes, we want to be put on the IRS.gov public website database. And then from there, do you own or operate website through which taxpayer information is collected, transmitted, and stored or processed? That's no. You know what I'm saying? Because we don't have a website for that purpose. So that'll be no. And from there, we'll hit continue. And so that's, that's that, that's that information dealing with the uh, firm's information. And from here, it gives you all the different forms that we're going to be processing. We, 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 getting started, you won't start with all these forms inside your business, but this is all about growth. So you want to mention all the different forms possible that you can process to position yourself for growth later down the road by saying yes up front. That way, if you happen to get a client that follows to any of these categories, they already, you already let the IRS know that these are one of the forms you will be uh, preparing. And so that's what that's all about. And then from there, we have, uh, continue again. This is the principal, the principal, the responsible, official, primary contact, alternate contact can all be the same person or they might be different people if you have a team. At the time, this person didn't have a team, so he played all the different roles uh, for the business and had to use himself for all the different roles and put the number down. Say notify of changes. Uh, they There's no for whatever reason, but the bottom line is that's how that works when it comes to authorization, authorized users. For people who have teams, for, pe for traditional income tax service that has Teams like managers, assistant managers, uh, that play a significant role, they should be listed in this area. Uh, either as a responsible official, primary contact, alternate contact. They should have different people for these roles, for people that have teams that have, that help to run the business. And then we hit continue. And then that's the, this the firm information we went over earlier. This is the authorized user section we just got through going over. This here, terms of agreement, signatures, 
personal information. And here we have to fill this section out. Fingerprints we have to do. Uh, everything. This here is an old account, so that's why all these things read this way. For a new account that you're just getting started with, of course, it's not going to say anything because you're going to be basically filling out each section as you get to it. And so basically what I'm doing is scrolling through each section that's already been done. So terms of agreement, signature and personal information, boom. Uh, and so that's been filled out. The next section is ERO, electronic return originator is what we are. For profit, we're for profit, we're here to make money. Again, these are the different forms we're going to be doing uh, as we grow and scale the business. And then from there we scroll down and continue. And so we have no even information here. And so we're going to continue. And so at this point, we're at the application comments. It says provider options updated electronic return originator. That's what we are. This is the username. God is love one, two, three, and whatever password they chose. And then this is the tracking information. Back in the day, we used to have to call the IRS and get fingerprint cards. They would send you two fingerprint cards. You would get both of them done and you put the tracking number on both and you would mail them to the address that they gave you inside the envelope that said that, that the two fingerprint cards came from. And they would do a background check to see if you were suitable. And from there, if you were, they, uh, you log back in here and find out if it, that you're active and valid means you was approved. And from there, we will print out the e-signature. We'll print out the uh, application summary. Because this here summary gives you all the information we would need to know. So for the EFIN information, it would be right here, whatever that number was that you got approved of. And so that would be the information that we will submit to the uh, software company as well as the banks. And so this here is the process that you go through for the application. We got the firm's information, application details, authorized user, uh, application summary, which is this page here. Application comments, application submission, application status. And from here, that means drop, meaning the number you used to have was dropped. For, the most common reason they dropped because if you don't use the number over a period of time, they'll drop it. And so you might get a letter in ahead of time letting you know they're going to drop it. Or you, or if you didn't have your uh, application constantly updated like you should, where it went to another address and came back to them, that would be another reason for dropping it because you, part of your requirement is to keep your application information updated. Address change updated. Telephone number updated. Email address updated. Anything that need to be updated should be updated as it occurs. And so this here is the process of coming in here and filling out this application. This application is not a common easily to prepare application because it has hidden sections that need to be filled out that if you never done before, you would know about that. And so the average person who fills these out have to get on a phone to e-services and they will politely walk you through filling this out. Uh, and so it's all about the person who's confident in their abilities to even try to fill out on their own first. Or do they just call e-services and let them know, hey, I, I don't have a clue on um, what I'm looking at when it comes to filling out this application. E5 provides application. Can you walk me through helping me fill it out? And so that's been my experience with people that I work with who uh, tried uh, but couldn't do it. They called e-services to help them. Or they found someone like me who has a mentorship program who helps you fill these out for a fee. And so that's what I help do, help you fill these out for a fee. So the e file provides application and fingerprint process has changed. We no longer do fingerprint cards. They have it where you schedule a fingerprint in the, in the, it, based on where you live at and based on what vendors that's available there. You pick one, you pick a time and date, and you go there, you get your fingerprints, and basically they process the application. They do the background check to see if you're suitable, and if they deem you're suitable, you get approved, and that information we print out, like I say, they, application summary is what we print out which is two pages and we say that to our computers because we're going to need this application we're going to need the pizza letter we're going to need the irs ein number and if you incorporated the state uh, registration paperwork along with your valid id so those are four documents 
that you possibly need based on your infrastructure as far as how you uh, set up your business when it comes to being sole proprietor versus a, a LLC or a corporation or something like that that involves extra paperwork. And so if you need help with getting this filled out and helping you with your fingerprints scheduling, uh, I do those things. It's included inside my mentorship and coaching program for new tech professionals, but I understand everybody won't need my full fetch mentorship program. They might just need this particular task done and they willing to pay someone to help them get that done. And that's the role I play in the marketplace when it comes to helping people who want to start their own tech preparation business get started. I help them fill out this application because this here is the most vital part of what we do. When it comes to the business structure, you don't have to have an EI in them. You can use your own social if you're a sole proprietor. Uh, and so getting started based on the individual who took the time to go out and get their business structure and paperwork done already, then that's what we'll put on the application. But it's not mandatory if you haven't got it done already. But we suggest if you plan on using a business name and you need an EIN number to go with it, and we suggest you get all that stuff done first so we can have it to put on the e-file provider's application because for every time you go, cause certain changes that's going to be made can't be made without having this process uh, reprocess. And you don't want to put yourself in that situation uh, with the even because you don't know if it's going to be ready in time for the next upcoming tax season. So that's why you want to have someone that you can talk to who has knowledge and skills and experience with helping people fill out this e file provider's application, schedule the fingerprints, and let you know that whatever possible changes you might want to do, you just want to simply get a new EFIN because once you get your first EFIN, everything after that is instant. Because once you've been approved and found suitable, all additional EFINs, which stands for e file provider's app, a, a number, you get the same day. So that's the beauty of it. Uh, so if you need assistance, if you need help with getting this application filled out, getting your fingerprint scheduled, reach out to me. That's what I do inside my mentorship for new tax professionals. Uh, I help the new person that's looking to get started in this awesome career industry get started from A to Z. And uh, I'll see you in my next video.